proposition, like the letter. This is known as the universal affirmation. Okay? Second is called the E proposition. And this is known as the universal negation. Then we have two classes of existential. So this is universal. Now we have two classes of. Just commit this to memory. Um, the first are I, what are known as I propositions. Preserves the form, it's an affirmation. It's an existential affirmation. Okay? And then two O, A E I O. The O proposition, P R O P O S I T. And this is an existential negation. Negation, negation. Okay. A proposition. Universal affirmation, E proposition, universal negation, I proposition, existential affirmation, O proposition, existential negation. Okay? Just commit it to memory. Now we're going to go back to our, we're on the next page, page three. Now we're going to go back to the diagram. And we recognize from the example before that I'm strategically going to put each of these propositions in a particular spot. The A proposition is going to go in upper left. E is going to go in upper right. I is going to go in lower left. O is going to go in lower right. And then we connect. Just like we've been doing the whole time. There you go. We've connected everything, right? Subalternation, contradictory, subcontraries, contraries. Right? We've we've done that. Okay. So here's and I'm not gonna write this piece down, I'm just gonna read it so that you have an understanding because I've already um, talked about the logical relationship between these parts. Let's read along. A, the universal affirmation, right? A, the universal affirmation um, is contrary to the universal negation. A the universal affirmation is contrary to E, the universal negation. This shouldn't be difficult because we know that that's going to be a contrary relationship. Not only do we know that it's going to be a contrary relationship, but we know sort of, if you remember, the, I'm not going to go into truth values and stuff, but we understand that, right? So the universal affirmation is contrary to the universal negation. It is A, is contradictory to the existential negation. It is contradictory to the existential negation and super altern to the existential affirmation. Now that's the only one I'm going to read and the rest I'm going to do and explain without the notes just to show you that it's it's once you really get this you don't even need the notes, right? You can you you can make the assessment without notes, right? Because you understand the format. So let's look at it. Right? We know that this is affirmation affirmation, right? A is an affirmation. Um, I is an affirmation, right? So this is affirmation, A, F, F, I, R. Affirmations here, A and I. We see that E is a negation and O is a negation. So negations on this side. If I could spell this one, N, E, G, A. Negation here, negation here. We know that the top half is universal and the bottom half is existential, so it's easy. So if I were to ask, what is describe the relationship of I to the I proposition, to the A, E, and O proposition, you should be able to do it immediately, right? I is subcontrary to, uh, let me be technical, the um, existential affirmation, the existential affirmation is subcontrary to the existential negation. It is in a 
subaltern relationship to the universal affirmation and in a contradictory relationship to the universal negation. We put universal on the top and we put uh, existential on the bottom. Right. I probably should have incorporated this diagram into the, uh, the notes because it's, it's, a, it's a great diagram, but I just sort of freestyle this. I didn't expect to, to incorporate this, right? But this is a good way of dividing it, right? So that you recognize that this would be the existential negation. This would be the universal negation. This would be the universal affirmation. And this would be the existential affirmation. So that way you could, um, that way you can sort of break it down well, I think. That, that actually was a really good image. I probably, I hate adding after I start the lecture. And maybe I will add it. I probably will create it and add it. Um, so then, if I were to say, what is the relationship of the E proposition to the A, I, and O proposition? So this is the last one. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Hopefully you get it. The, the E proposition is in a contrary, oh, let me be technical. The um, universal negation is in a contrary relationship to the universal affirmation. The universal negation is in a contradictory relationship to the existential affirmation. And it is in a super alternate relationship to the um, existential negation. And there you have it, right? So as long, like, like I said, it's not something that initially, I mean, think about how, how long we've come. This, this, now we're getting technical, right? To, to say that, and for it to be significant, what you're, what you're saying has meaning, right? To say that the um, existential negation is in a contradictory relationship to the universal affirmation in a um, subaltern relationship to the universal negation and in a subcontrary relationship to the existential affirmation is, 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 is pretty powerful, right? That's, that's some powerful stuff. Um, if you keep the image in your head, I'm all about images, you keep the image in your head and you know the quadrants, sort of the, each of the quadrants, you can, uh, you can immediately make sense of this, right? So uh, hopefully that works. What I'm going to do now, um, two more steps and then it gets really crazy. This was a pretty intense step, but hopefully it, it makes sense, right? I don't think it should be intense. I mean, if I were to start here, right, if I started off the lecture and was like, hi, I'm Dr. Campbell, um, we're going to talk about the relationship between the four... Um, propositions to universal, to existential, and talk about, you know, subaltern relationships. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, you'd be like, what is, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? But now it makes sense, right? Because you recognize that all I'm doing is I'm preserving a pattern of relationships. This is what critical thinking is about, identifying the pattern. What's the pattern? I've given you the pattern over and over again. But what I've done is, each time I present the pattern, I complicate the pattern just a little bit more, just a little bit more, complicate the pattern a little bit more. But what I'm doing is I'm basically hardwiring the way that you think critically so that now you recognize, no, I just have to go back to the basic pattern. If I get confused when we get more and more abstract, I just have to go back to the basic pattern and work my way back. You cannot, it's impossible for you to get lost, right? Okay, so now I'm going to complicate it even more. And this is the way we're going to complicate it, right? This is really going to get complex. We are going to mathematically, um, within mathematical logic, represent it. Now, I'm not going to explain uh, the mathematics behind this. Watch my Venn diagrams video. Um, if you're not comfortable in predicate logic, you will need to watch the predicate logic video. So this part is, a, is quite a bit more advanced. But the genius of this is you don't even need to understand this is like the red-green example that I gave earlier. You won't even need to understand what this means. You'll be able to replicate this and be 100% right about the relationships of this very complex mathematical relationship, very complex mathematical relationship, without having to even be able to read what these things say. That's how, that's how strong and sort of regimented this pattern is, right? Pattern identification is essential. And I know, if you've been following along up until this point, you get it. So now we're really going to jump in, right? So the A proposition, the A proposition is identified as follows. We're going to do all four quadrants, right? 